But first, let's welcome Dr. Paul Levinson to Jesse Ventura's America. Dr. Levinson is a professor and department chair of communication and media studies at Fordham University. Dr. Levinson, welcome to the show. Good to be here, Governor. First of all, and before we do it, Doctor's written a couple of books, too. We want to make sure, get those on the air. The Pixel Eye, what's that about? It's about a New York City forensic detective uh, who's investigating squirrels that are spying on people. See, I teach very serious things. All right, so like that's, a, that's a good one. Squirrels <laughs> yeah. spying on people, okay. Um, doctor, you're an expert on the media. Are we truly getting good stories today? I mean, when the media sells us and you pick up or you watch the evening news and, and all you see are Kobe Bryant. And the thing that I dislike about it is it's all speculation. Nobody's under oath. They're, they're, they're trying the cases before the court does. Is that a good policy for the media to do? Well, it's not a good policy, but that's the way it's always been. The media have always presented a mixture of good stories and bad stories. Uh, the media are really not much better than any other uh, institutions and the people who work shouldn't there. shouldn't they be? Well, ideally they should, but the important thing is that they be as aggressive as possible, try to cover as many stories as possible, and the price that we pay for that uh, being on the case and uncovering things like Watergate and very important stories is that, yeah, lots of the time the media do unimportant things and make a big deal out of things that aren't that significant. But who is the person or institution to say, well, the media can cover that story, but not the other story? If we leave it to the government to do that, oh, no, yeah, then what will happen is the government will say, well, don't cover any stories that make us look bad. And that was the way of the media in the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany. Sure. Isn't it true, though, that uh, most so-called news today is created by the media, a lot of it? Well, again, that was always the case. And, uh, you know, the media, the, the problem is they're on 24 hours, you know, seven days a week in terms of cable shows. Newspapers always had to put out uh, at least one edition a day. Years ago, sometimes two, three editions. So you need material to fill up that space and to fill up those pages. And so, again, sometimes they tend to stoke stories along. But it's still good that we have those avenues because then when a real story comes along, the media are raring to go. They're, they're like a watchdog, and uh, we want the watchdog barking or ready to bark all the time. Yeah, but isn't it dangerous when the media is creating news, not reporting it? I mean, my point is this. For years and years, especially the television media, they wrote off the news. They didn't worry about it. They didn't worry if it lost money because they felt it was their obligation to report facts to the public. And that if it lost money, oh well, that's a risk we take, we'll make it up in other places. But now it seems that they've learned that, you know, reporting the news can be a profit maker. So now it's clear to me that they're looking at the bottom line, they're looking at how much profit the news can make us, rather than simply giving us what may be drab stories that don't sell real well. Now it's the opposite. Who cares about the drab stories that affect everyone? Let's get to a story that really affects nobody, but titillates or, or fascinates us. Well, the key is what we think of the American people. Now, Thomas Jefferson had great faith in the rationality of human beings in general and Americans in particular. And he said most of the news in newspapers of his day was fit to wrap fish in the day that the stuff was published, not even the next day. But he said he wasn't concerned about that because he believed that people could separate truth from falsity. People could see when things were being distorted, when the media of his day were making a deal. But what about deal. Jason Blair's case? Yeah. This is the New York Times where a guy gets caught fabricating. If you can't trust the New York Times, who can you? Well, you shouldn't trust the New York Times. And okay. frankly, the New York Times has always been too arrogant. Uh, you know, their motto is all the news that's fit to print. A more honest uh, motto would be all the news that a few editors deem fit to print. Stay with us, Paul. We'll be right back, right after this word to Jesse Ventura's America.